quick if it's found quickly without dragging on for a long period of time because then the longer it drags out then yeah chance is going to happen you're going to find it eventually but if there's a quick hit on the pattern then that betters the chance of it uh, having relevance and and uh, being something uh, worth looking into and so uh, when you run his name through the programming supposedly his name appears in uh, Revelation 13 Matthew 24, uh, 2 Thessalonians uh, chapter 2, and others. But all the others, uh, all these verses, all talk about the end times and the Antichrist, which, you know, which is uh, pretty interesting. But, you know, in the end, I can't 100% vouch for the authenticity of this because I don't have the software to check it out. Um, but it's definitely worth a mention. Just because of all the other things people you know, associate him with being the Antichrist. Uh, it's just interesting to see that maybe this might have some relevance. But all the relevance could be, though, he could be a facilitator to the rising of the Antichrist. But right now, it seems the uh, person generating the most uh, interest in being the Antichrist is Barack Obama. Um, he, and again he's president of the United States is in a position of power um, so that's sort of natural except that you know he has been showing uh, uh, more things more than other presidents that that he could be the Antichrist um, and uh, you know you can go on the internet and you can find plenty of sites giving their reasons why they think uh, Barack Obama is the Antichrist um, one, inter one interesting side, basically, they felt there was 12 of 19 characteristics that Obama ex exhibits uh, of the Antichrist. Uh, so we'll go over them. Uh, the first one is he starts off small but becomes great. And Obama definitely started off small as a, or a community organizer, a state politician. Then a senator, which is a bit much better, but he wasn't—he didn't even complete a first term. His first term in the Senate, um, he sort of really leapfrogged uh, politically, uh, which doesn't normally happen, especially to, to be president. You know, uh, you know, he goes from state senator to president in a very short period of time, and so parallel starts small becomes great. Uh, too arrogant and boastful. Um, just about any politician has that particular uh, characteristic. Um, but, you know, Barack Obama has his share of it. Um, you know, this whole messiah complex that follows him. You know, anybody, anybody that has a lot of people who adore them one way or the other uh, becomes this way, whether it's a rock star or or a rich person that a lot of people look up to, uh, it breeds arrogance, and, uh, and so a lot of people have that, and Obama definitely does. Uh, three, he will cause great devastation. Um, they were giving reasons of, you know, his, uh, with the economy, I mean, he inherited a bad economy, but, you know, his socialist uh, agenda will not help our capitalist system. Um, but also his policies, possibly uh, his policies in foreign and uh, foreign policies of defense. You know, being a socialist, being a left winger, he's uh, definitely going to do things that could devastate this country. Um, although I would take more of the devastation as to being actions that he does when he's the Antichrist more than just oh he ascends to power and he ruins the country. Uh, you know. Uh, four, he will become strong, not by his own hand or power. Uh, Obama rose to power with the help of others, definitely. Uh, the Kennedys being one of them, uh, Oprah being the lesser one, um, to help push him. Because the idea being that he was such a minor player, you know, an up and coming player, but a minor player. You know, you don't, you know, you just don't run for Senate one day 
become senator and then a few years later run for president, let alone win it. So he definitely had the help of others to push him to be in position to where he is. Um, so number five, blasphemous. Um, he definitely has he's made fun of the Bible here or there uh, before the election. And just the fact that his um, his politics, I mean, he supports uh, many things that are anti-Bible, you know, uh, basically uh, yeah, everything that's anti-Bible. Although he claims to be a Christian, obviously a, a, a very liberal Christian. But he sort of have this, has this anything goes mentality, which all um, uh, uh, liberals, socialist uh, progressives do. Um, you know, everybody should be allowed to do whatever they want as long as it doesn't hurt others, you know. Um, number six, he will come from a strong political military power. Well, uh, of course, the United States is the lone superpower right now for the time being. Uh, number seven, uh, he's stern looking. You know, the king of fierce continents. Obama, uh, I would say, does have a, a certain stern look to him. Definitely a different look. Uh, number eight, a master of deception and intrigue. Uh, I think at least it says dark sayings. Um, well, being a politician, just about any politician, will have a degree of that. And... Uh, but it's interesting to note that the Newsweek editor called Obama uh, creepy and deeply manipulative, a, a, a deeply manipulated creature. Uh, interesting from a guy that helped getting elected. You know, again, this this person isn't like you know a Rush Limbaugh or somebody who is who is not of this political stripe. Uh, and it's interesting. This is after the election. He finds this out. You helped elect. A creepy, uh, what you called a creepy and deeply manipulative creature. Um, but, but again, politicians, that's their game. I mean, a good politician will be that way. Uh, nine, he will be different from those who precede him. Of course, Barack Obama being uh, black, and, uh, and he looks different. He's definitely different from those who preceded him. And not just by his looks, but by his political philosophy, he's definitely the most progressive uh, liberal we've had so far. I mean, we've had this slow decline, this the slow liberalization process with our presidents over the years, and and um, you know, Bill Clinton seemed pretty liberal, but Bill Clinton was smart enough to um, ride the fence, play both sides a bit to help stay in power. Uh, Barack, I'm not so sure. I think he's a, he's definitely an ideologue, and I think he will, like a Carter, I think he will try, he will do what he believes he should be doing, and I don't think he's going to bend too much one way or the other. You know, although you know he may take what he learned from Clinton, you know, bend here, bend there, and then you get you know, through a, a slightly watered down version of what you want to do. But we'll see. Number 10, he will be known as a lawless one or a rebel. Um, Obama's code name from the Secret Service is uh, Renegade. And the definition for Renegade is a lawless one, a rebel. Uh, and interesting enough, his car's code name, uh, his presidential car, they made a new souped up one, um, uh, bomb proof bulletproof and all that and its code name is the beast uh, so when you look at those play on words there that's kind of interesting uh, number 11 uh, he's standing in the holy place uh, he was at the wailing wall and that's where they got that from um, and also there's a play on words of uh, the Obama nation and it sounds like a bomb Abomination, Obama nation, and it sounds like an abomination. Uh, standing in the holy place, 
just by the Wailing Wall. And that to me is a little bit le uh, weak, although the play on words with the abomination is uh, is kind of neat. And just the fact that, you know, he's called uh, Messiah. He has this little bit of a Messiah complex, or at least people putting it on him, like Louis Farrakhan. You know, the Messiah has, speaking, has spoken. You're listening to the Messiah. Uh, you know, when you mix that together, you definitely get a picture of a picture of somebody that could be that uh, the Antichrist.